Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of Game Talk. After uh, last week's or two weeks ago, uh, the episode, I got some positive feedback of a lot of people telling me I should do it again, so I decided to do it again, and uh, which was a, which was really what I was hoping for. And, um, you know, this week I'm going to be talking about Donkey Kong Country Returns, Dragon Quest Nine, Sentinels of the Sorry Skies, and the decline of strategy guides. So, uh, you know, kick back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hey guys, so uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, leaving E3 uh, 2010, not, or not that I was there, but watching it, uh, this was definitely the game that I was most excited for. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo, and back then it showed that, especially to Sega and, and people who thought, you know, I have to get a better console, back in, I think, 94 when the game was first released, um, it, it Nintendo showed people that you don't need a better console to get really good graphics, and, you know, the, that series on the, on the Super Nintendo, it, if looking back, you know, if you if you go and pop it in today, it's still a great, you know, visually striking game. Um, you know, even aside from just the great um, gameplay, you know, visually it was great, and uh, it, it basically kept the Super Nintendo alive a little longer. Uh, you know, at least two more years until the Nintendo 64 came around. But uh, anyway, I digress. Um, Donkey Kong Country um, returns. You know, it just it brings Donkey Kong back to his side scrolling, um, you know, roots. I guess in a sense. Um, you know, before before that, he was only I think in in like you know the regular Donkey Kong arcades. So um, that was a big jump to, to put him into you know his saw him in his own game and um, you know it, it just it, it worked out well. So uh, when when they said that this was coming back, I was I was really hyped. Um, you know they, they showed us some gameplay. The game looked great visually, um, but it just looked like it was. Donkey Kong Country, you know, it, the, it was a really aptly titled return, so there was really a return to to what, you know, everybody remembered back, you know, 16 years ago, and, you know, the game, this game itself is is just that, except you, you, it's, you're playing it on the Wii instead of the Super Nintendo, basically, and, um, you know, I, I had heard before I started playing it how hard it gets halfway through the game, and people weren't kidding. This game, it may you know you may think that oh it's Donkey Kong anybody can play it. Anybody can play it. It has a really easy um, you know pick up and play, but um, it gets challenging as hell. Um, I'm at world six I think, and once I hit world four it was just it was you know lights out. It, it's that difficult. Although the gameplay is really difficult, it's never cheap, in a sense. Uh, it's always because you messed up, and I always appreciate that in games. If it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. But don't be it, you know, don't be to the point where um, it's hard be just to be, you know, just because um, the game is broken. This isn't like that at all. Um, you know, if you if you die, it's, it's most likely your fault. Um, you know, it goes back to, the, to just the regular... Uh, you know, like the side-scrolling combat, you just jump on, on enemies and stuff like that. Um, and then it also brings back the cart levels, which are just so much fun in this game. They're so hard, but they're so much fun. Um, I, I, it, there were levels I didn't want to end, and I would go back and, and replay them. So, um, you know, it, it brings back that type of stuff. Um, this time, and Diddy Kong's back, but you don't control him in this one. In the, in the first one, in, in Donkey Kong Country, and, and, you know, on the Super Nintendo, you were able to jump back and forth between... Um, between Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong, here you don't. He just kind of acts as like a, as a, as uh, if you have him, you get two extra hits, basically. And he has like a, a hoverboard, uh, not a hoverboard, like a jetpack, so you can, you can jump for longer. But that's basically the extent of Diddy Kong. And um, you know, it has great boss battles and stuff like that, which you would expect a lot, like the first ones. And like the first one, you collect the the KONG, uh, you get extra lives and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's and. It's a lot like the first one, and I'm not complaining about that. Um, this one obviously has uh, enhanced graphics and, and it can do more uh, on the CD as opposed to the card. And a lot of times you jump between the foreground and the background, which is really cool. You can jump into barrels and you'll get shot back, you know, further into the distance, and you have to, you know, navigate through there, and then you jump back and forth. So you, it does a lot of stuff like that, um, which is which is great because it keeps things interesting. And, and you know, there were, you know, it was there were times where it was just like you know really cool just to jump back. I mean, and you don't, like, the camera doesn't come with you, it kind of just shoots you further back, and you just walk along, like, a, a path in the back, and you're, like, you know, microscopic. Um, so it does that, it does that quite a bit, and, um, it's just, it's just a really, really fun game. And I'm, I, you know, I, I got it for Christmas, and I never really played it much, because our Wii was upstairs, and I, I brought it back downstairs and popped this in, and I haven't been able to stop playing it. Um, it's just, you know, the bosses with the levels, 
uh, you know, it's the, it's the total package. It's probably my favorite Wii game from last year, to be honest. Um, I do like it more than Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, it's it's just a blast, and everybody who is a fan of the Super Nintendo games should definitely check this out. And if you're not a fan of the Super uh, Super Nintendo games, you should still check this out. So, two thumbs up to uh, to Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. Hey guys, so the second part of the uh, you know the second game I'm going to be covering today is uh, Dragon Quest Nine: Sentinels of the Starry Skies on the, on the Nintendo DS. And bear with me, I always I, I I don't think I've ever really talked about an RPG. Um, in, in videos or stuff like that, I never review them. There's just so much to do in these types of games that it's hard to cover, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stab at it. Um, I, I got this over the summer right when it had released, and I, was, I wasn't too excited about it, but um, then I started watching gameplay and stuff like that, and, and it's an RPG that's right up my alley, because um, I just, I, I love, I, I've stated it before, I love traditional RPGs. I like just, um, you know, turn-based stuff, and, and this is exactly what um, I look for in an RPG. Um, the, the story um, is basically you are like an angel and you come down to protect, I think, I, again, I, I started the game months and months and months ago, and, um, and you come down, you, um, you have to protect the morals and stuff like that in the world, and uh, you just travel around and you collect these figs, I think they are, they're like little, they're like fruit, and you just collect them around the world and just help people, mostly uh, th people who have died who are still trying to reconnect with those living. Um, and it, it's a pretty good story, if I'm correct in that in that um, storytelling right there. Um, but the gameplay is is really cool. Right from the start, you get to customize your character greatly. Um, I mean, just you can pick a ton of stuff. It's like it's like a create a wrestler mode in a wrestling game. And throughout the game, you can uh, you know you buy armor and you can buy um, whatever you need to do to you know armor, weapons, um, hats, gloves, shoes, like pants. You can basically. Um, you know, I guess in a sense, like decorate your character as, and the characters that join your party and stuff like that um, more than any other RPG that I can remember. I don't play a ton of RPGs, but this is definitely one that I um, that really stands out as as being just one that I can't remember any other one being this deep. And um, it's 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 really cool. Um, you know, the the gameplay itself is your basic just turn based RPG. It's not like you know. Uh, it doesn't do anything really too different. Um, you, you can have, uh, and, and how, how it works, you build up each character individually. So if, 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 if I start my character, I can start him as, a, you know, um, a mage or, you know, someone who just uses powers to heal. Uh, my, my personal one, I cho chose to be like a warrior type. So I, every, every so often when you gain levels, you get the skill points and you can put them towards, you know, um, like striking and, and defense and just you know different different areas of stuff and you know if you put all your stuff onto you know sword skill then you're gonna be a warrior if you want to be you know uh, a mage you put it all on that type of stuff and it's really cool because you're not really picking a class so to speak you can be balanced and you know if I want to put you know 15 skill points to this and then I want to start doing this it, it balances out I haven't really balanced anybody out I have somebody in my party who does who just heals, and then I have someone who just does black magic, and then I just have two warriors. But if you want to um, do that, you know, if you want to balance your guy out, you're you're welcome to do that. And it's really cool because you know you're not set in stone into you know right, this is this what this person to do, this is what this person to do. So it gives a lot of power to the player. Uh, in terms of combat, it's just your your basic turn based RPG. Um, you know, it's just it, it's basically kind of at random who goes when, um, which is kind of frustrating because. In my party, I have somebody who um, who just heals. So there are times where my guy, you know, somebody in the, in the party will um, be really low, and I'll throw a, a medical herb on them, only for her to just you know f fix them up. So it's kind of frustrating there. But um, you know, it's just you have you you learn different spells, you learn different abilities based on on where you are in the um, you know on the the system of, of XP points and stuff like that. Um, the world itself is really good. There's a lot of funny dialogue in the MP with the NPCs. Um, it's it's just an all-around really good game. It has just a really great environment. Um, it's not great looking really by any means. Um, there are a lot better looking games on the DS, but I really like the the, the visual style. It feels like you're playing a Super Nintendo RPG, uh, which or you know GBA one. So um, I, I like that type of stuff in RPGs. I don't need to be wowed by graphics and stuff like that. Um, it's it's completely text based. There's no you know there, there's cutscenes, but it's all just text based. Um, 
it's just a really good all-around um, RPG. I really haven't heard that much, you know, bad said about this game, and, and I totally understand why. It's, it's just really good all-around. I'm really looking forward to playing Dragon Quest IV just because of this game. This is the first Dragon Quest game uh, in, in the original, you know, in, like, the real series. I have um, Dragon Quest Rocket Slime, but that's not the same. Um, but, you know, this, and you can actually even play this with friends if you, on Wi-Fi. I mean, I haven't done that because I don't really have anybody, I don't really know anybody in my area who plays this, but, um, you know, there's just, there's just a ton of stuff to do. There's side quests, there's just, there's just so much stuff to tackle in this game, and if you're a fan of RPGs, and, uh, you know, there's a ton on, on the DS, but there's very few that I think are, that could be better than this, and I have heard the same, you know, I've heard people say that. So, uh, again, two thumbs up for, for Dragon, uh, Dragon Quest Nine. And um, you could probably find it for 20 bucks now, um, or just get it new for like 30. Um, but either way, whatever you have to do, get your hands on this game. And I, I, I'm about 25 hours into it, and I've, I pl started playing it a couple days ago when I was at 15. So I'm pretty deep now into it, um, but I think I still have a ton left. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the quest uh, through though. Okay guys, so the final uh, segment in this week's episode is uh, on the decline of strategy guides. And, um, you know, back in the day when, you know, when Nintendo Power was, was starting to come out, you know, I have two issues right here. I have about 70 issues of the old Nintendo Power. But here's two of them. Um, you know, anything that you would had to get um, to help you, you know, any information that you had to get from, a, you know, about beating a game, either came from your friends or from strategy guides, like the Nintendo Power or even, you know, like I have a Final Fantasy X here. But, you know, even more recently I have Bioshock 2. Um, so, you know, I have a couple here, Infamous and, and stuff like that, but, you know, today all you have to do is just go on GameFAQs.com or type or IGN or type in, you know, Bioshock 2 walkthrough. And it's a shame because um, I personally still like going through the hard copy of, of a strategy guide. I mean, I don't like really buying them, but I like having them. Um, same thing goes with, I guess, um, gaming magazines, but I'm going to save that for another day. Um, you know, it's it's a shame that there's so much stuff now is moving digitally, and you know these types of magazines. You know, um, here's you know like my infamous one has so much stuff in it, just really cool art and stuff like that. Um, it's a terrible game, but it's still a really you know cool like you know look at the opponent stuff. You're not gonna find that online. I don't know how good, how well you guys can see that, but um, you know it's a shame that that these types of, of magazines, these mediums are, are dying. Um, I, I still I love how these look in a, in a little collection. You know I don't have obviously I have like a couple. Um, I used to have a lot more, but I got rid of them. And um, but you know it's it's I still I'm somebody who really enjoys having a hard physical copy. That's why I'm not really big into digital downloads. Um, so it's a shame that um, that these types of games. You know I have the map here also. You know you, you just can't really find this stuff on you know a game fax. It's not the same. Um, and nothing's more frustrating than, you know, in this, if I have to figure out, alright, I'm, I'm at, um, you know, I'm at mission 27, you know, I can just flip through the chat, through the pages, and I'm eventually going to get it. Online, it's, it stinks, like, you know, going through just a whole white, um, you know, like, a, just a, a long web page of just white text and, you know, black text, and it's just, it's just annoying. I like having, you know, visual stuff here to help me out. Um, you know, some websites are better than others, but for the most part, it's just basically blank, you know, a, you know, a white background with some black text. So, um, I mean, I, I didn't get too into this, obviously. I think that, I, I hope that, that um, strategy guys stick around because it, it's, you know, it's a big part of, of gaming history. Um, but, you know, with, with the advent of the internet, of the internet, it's gonna be tough, so. I mean, we'll see what happens. I know that a lot of people out there still buy them, which is good, and I think it's a big reason because, you know, gamers still want to have, you know, the hard physical copy in front of them. I mean, and this stuff just looks really nice. So let me know in the comments how you guys feel about strategy guides. Okay, so that concludes episode two um, of Game Talk. If you guys have any suggestions on future episodes, on future topics, uh, what I should cover, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, please like it. And, uh, you know, if, if you're not a subscriber of mine, please subscribe. Uh, I'm always looking for more subscribers. And I'm really looking for feedback on the episode and, and the series in general. So if you have any suggestions at all on what I should include in future episodes, um, if, if you like this, you know, the style and presentation, please let me know um, in the comments. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I, I really only do this because, I'm only doing this because people seem to really like it. If nobody liked it, I probably would have stopped and, and my channel would have really gone into hibernation. Um, but again, thank you all for the feedback on episode one. Please, um, you know, just give me feedback on episode two, and I'll see you guys next week.